During the month of August, Kentucky is invaded by the tiniest of world travelers as a large numbers of hummingbirds make their way south for the winter. Let's travel to the Land Between the Lakes Woodland Nature Station as these popular little birds stop over for a snack. What you're seeing here this afternoon is you're seeing this amazing spectacle of peak migration season for the ruby-throated hummingbird. So a lot of people are familiar with hummingbirds. They're a pretty popular bird that a lot of people like to attract to, to, their, to their garden. Um, and they, they can be found in Kentucky throughout you know, spring through early fall, but during, during late summer, kind of late July through August, a big wave of them passes through as they're migrating south um, to, to their wintering grounds. It, amazingly enough, you know, for a little bird that weighs less than a nickel, they, they travel, you know, as, as far as 2,000 miles. A lot of them cross the Gulf of Mexico nonstop, 500 miles, 20 hours nonstop flying, and most of them end up wintering in Mexico and Central America and we typically see the biggest wave pass through around, around this time of year and, and into the month of August and they're just coming through in waves and you know they're traveling far distances so they're, they're feeding, feeding, feeding to fuel up and that, that's, that's what you see going on here right now. There's lots of different types of hummingbirds, although hummingbirds are only found in the Western Hemisphere, so it's kind of unique. You go to Asia or Europe, you don't see any hummingbirds. Out of all the different types, you know, several hundreds of hummingbirds, we only have one <laughs> that nests in the Eastern United States, and it's the ruby-throated hummingbird. Now, uh, sometimes it, it, it can be a little confusing. People look at hummingbirds and they think they're seeing uh, several different types because from one to another they could look different. They're called ruby-throated because the, the adult males have a ruby, a bright ruby-colored throat. But the females and the young ones don't. So there's one difference, you know. So some have a red throat and some don't. And then, you know, the feathers of a hummingbird are iridescent. And which kind of imagine a soap bubble, you know, you're blowing soap bubbles and they're kind of moving around in the air and if the sun hits them at a certain angle, they might kind of, kind of look green or it hits them this way, they might look yellow or purple. Well, a hummingbird's feathers work the same way. So, you know, the, the, they reflect light from the sun. So if, you know, the sun hits at this angle, they might look green on their back or it might look yellow or, and, and it, it might appear to us that we're seeing, you know, all sorts of different colored, different types of hummingbirds, but chances are we're seeing all ruby-throated hummingbirds, same kind. <laughs> They're, they're such an extreme animal. You, you know, for one thing, they're, they're, they're gorgeous. You know, they're, they're shiny and colorful. They're tiny, you know, they're the tiniest bird in the world. They're, they're fast, you, you know, they're, they're, the hummingbird can beat their wings over 50 times in one second, uh, you know. Uh, they're, everything about them is extreme, you, you, you know, from their speed, to you know their activity level, they're you know they're constantly feeding. If if they say if a human um, it was like a hummingbird, we would have to consume over 150,000 calories a day. So, so they're very very busy and active, and they're they're people friendly. You, you, you know, here's a bird that is pretty and and um, entertaining and busy. And where do they like to hang out in people's yards? You, you know. So how can you not fall in love with a bird like that? We think it's just such a cool sight to see this many hummingbirds in one place at one time. You know, we, literally we have counted as many as 200 hummingbirds in a single day here in, in early August. We've actually had some biologists come and, and study them and they literally counted more than 200 in one single day. And so, you know, we've created this festival to kind of just share that spectacle with the public because it's, it's, it's really neat. Um, we'll be having some other activity stations where people can learn about how to help uh, other kinds of backyard wildlife like monarch butterflies and bats and, and pollinators like bees. Um, we'll have all sorts of activities for kids like, a, you know, crafts and face painting and uh, things like that. So basically just a whole, whole weekend all about enjoying hummingbirds and learning about them and, and kind of learning about how we can help them and, and, and other backyard wildlife in our, in our lives.
Um, here at the Nature Station, you know, we've over the years we've created a, a backyard wildlife habitat, much like something that somebody could do, you know, in in their own yard. And basically, what we're trying to do is provide shelter, food, and water sources, you know, for a variety of different types of backyard wildlife, including birds. So, you know, um, you can see everything from hummingbirds to goldfinches to uh, bluebirds, indigo buntings, our state bird, the cardinal, all sorts of woodpeckers of you know several different types, um, as well as you know a variety of different butterflies and other pollinators like bumblebees, bats, squirrels, um, you know a variety of different different wildlife kind of makes themselves at home back here. I, I think probably my favorite reactions are are from children. You know when uh, they 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 have some kind of experience where you just see their face and their eyes just light up with excitement for, for, for something. One, one story that, that I can remember is uh, there was a little girl that was in here one time and she was having a great time. You know, she, I, th I think, was able to, to um, meet a couple of our animals up close and touch a couple of the animals and I think she saw some neat, neat different wildlife in the gardens and then you know she comes over up to me and she says I just love animals so much I want to learn about animals every minute of every day. <laughs> you can't ask for a better reaction than that. <laughs> As I always tell people, this is probably the best office that you could ever have, you know, to be um, surrounded by just beautiful outdoors every day. Um, um, so it's a lot of fun. You're always learning something new that, you know, no one can ever know everything there is to know about the natural world. And we uh, get visitors that come to the nature station from all over the world. So, you know, I, I get to spend my day not only um, out in nature, but you know, interacting and, and meeting all sorts of great, great people of all ages from, you know, from right here in Kentucky to across the world in Japan. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a really stimulating, interesting environment. Well, you know, I think a, 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 a really big uh, message, I guess, that, that, that we try to get across and hope people can go home with is, is just how important small actions that people can take just um, at their own home really can be to benefiting wildlife. You know, if you kind of think of the world from like a bird's point of view, they're looking down and a whole lot of that world is taken up by, by residential areas, you know, and, and the decisions that we make as far as what we put in our yards, um, if we, how friendly or not friendly we make it from wildlife, can really have a huge effect on, on how some of our favorite wildlife are surviving. You know, so we hope that people come here and, and see some examples of, of you know, native plants that benefit wildlife and, and uh, different uh, shelter ideas and, and different ways to offer water and, and, and really go home with it and, and find a way to, to, um, to, to help out wildlife in their own community. And, and it's, it's really not that hard and, and you know, if everybody does a little something, it can really make a big difference.